What's up, y'all? Ron again. And after some feedback, I decided to do another video about gain staging. And this one will be more thorough. So I'll start off like this. What is gain staging, right? Gain staging refers to controlling the loudness of instruments, samples, and audio clips before they reach the faders of the mixer tracks, right? So in other words, let's say that I load this kick. I do not want to be turning the kick down over here the first time that I decide to turn it down. And I'm going to show you the reasons for that and explain the way that I do it. So why, why do we gain stage, right? The purpose of gain staging is to control the overall loudness of the mix so that there will be headroom later during the mastering process. And in case you don't know, mastering is when you finalize your track and you're about to distribute it. So gain staging in the beginning will make the overall end product better for reasons that I'm gonna show in this video. All right, so how does gain staging help? Gain staging is more efficient because it makes everything easier, right? So let's look at this. Now, a lot of plugins, they're already too loud when you open them. And if you normalize audio in a sampler, like this audio here, because the samples that FL Studio gives you, most of them are normalized, all of them to my knowledge actually, then the normalized audio is gonna be too loud. So it's simpler to turn it down in the window of this plugin than to open the mixer and turn it down here. So that makes your workflow smoother because you just turn it down and move on to the next sound. And that's just one example, right? So if you look here, Look at how loud this sound is already. And I put a limiter that is keeping everything from being too loud because I don't want it to distort on YouTube. But check this out. See how loud it already is? And without the limiter, it would hit like negative two decibels. But it's not going to be able to pass this threshold. So that's to give you an idea of how loud these sounds are already. All right, so if you just go here and you just turn it down, then that's way easier than opening this and looking for which one it is and turning it down there. So that's the first thing. The next thing is it allows you to add your effects more easily. So some effects like distortion, they may cause you to clip because they make the sound even louder, right? So if I go to the mixer, and I go to this, you can see, I'm gonna turn it down because like, I don't wanna hurt your ears, <laughs> right? But I'm just gonna show you that it's a certain volume and when I add distortion, it starts to get louder. In case you never noticed this, and this is saturation by the way, so this is like mild distortion, it's not even heavy, like, like something in Destructor, but check it out. See, so you can see how as I start to apply the saturation, the sound gets louder. Now, if I was applying it to something like this kick that is already too loud and it was at negative two, if I applied the saturation, then it would clip. It would already be at zero. So that's the second reason why you gain stage. The next reason is it's harder to be precise with faders because they don't always change volume in a linear fashion when you move them from unity gain. And unity gain is their default position. So if I go here and we look at the faders, look up here, the left hand, because it tells you how much they're reducing. It starts to make a more drastic reduction when it's down here than when it's up here versus like up here is just like a 0 0.1 decibel or like one decibel when I move it this much. But when I'm down here, it's moving like two and three decibels at a time. So that is actually when I learned about gain staging, that's the main reason why you should gain stage because these are not as efficient at controlling gain as the gain controls that are in the plugins and even in the effects. Next, we're going to consider automation. 
because you might decide that you want to automate the gain of something like you want to make a crescendo and if you look at fl studios manual it says fruity balance is designed to be automated it's easier to automate gain using fruity balance than anything else right it's optimized to automate gain according to the manual so all you would have to do is like create an automation clip go here and then just affect it because it's designed to do that another way you could do it is like if you use Fruity Peak Controller. You could connect the Fruity Balance to the Peak Controller. Such as like an LFO. Or if you use Peak, then you could affect it when another sound is activating. So this is how a lot of people actually sidechain. They will connect the controller to the kick and then when the kick plays, the other sound will go down. Okay, so it's on the fruit kick. Touch this to peak. Now, I control this this way. And this is going to be funny because it's probably going to make itself turn down. <laughs> when I play the kick, this goes down now. And this type of automation is easier to do using Fruity Balance than using the faders because it's designed to do this, right? And not only that, if I made more of these, you know, let's do it like this, it's easier. Gain, Fruity Balance. I could link this one too. Peak, remove the conflicts. Except now, there were two, the kick would make both of them duck. So this is another thing to think about when gain staging, because to me, this is a manner of gain staging because you're just not using the fader, right? Like the whole purpose of gain staging is to just not use the fader because there are just better ways to affect the gain of the other sounds. That's the entire point. Now let's think about what is the purpose of a mixer track fader right so if you think about ingredients in a dish you would have a complete ingredient and then you would mix it together right like you would have flour and like eggs and like milk right you wouldn't have wheat and then be trying to mix the wheat into the food and hoping that it would work as wheat the ingredient would be complete it would already be flour in the same way, you would make your sounds complete and then mix them together. The faders are not intended as a part of creative sound design. They're intended to mix sounds that are finalized together. That's the reason why the individual plugins and many of the effects give you the option to add or subtract gain using them. This is so you can complete the sound and then mix all of the completed sounds together, right? So it helps to understand the purpose of why you have faders, even though when you look at them, you're like, yeah, this, this is just going to turn it down. Still, that's not what it's designed for. And it's just better to turn it down over here. It saves you time and it's more efficient. All right, so now let's look at what happens if you decide not to gain stage. So the simple answer is distortion. So normally, during the mastering process, a limiter is applied to make a hard limit to how loud the track will get so the overall loudness can be increased. Distortion occurs when the shape of the waveform is manipulated. Extreme compression changes the shape of a sound's waveform to be more like a square. Now, Thinking about this in the context of a mix, the loudest element, such as the kick drum, is going to trigger the limiter in the mastering process. But every sound is not supposed to trigger the limiter. Maximus is the limiter that is in FL Studio. And of course, you would be using it to maximize the track if you use stock plugins. I'm going to show you what happens when 
there is too much compression. The point is, I want you to see what happens to the kick drum and listen to how it is affected, how this introduces distortion. If you don't gain stage, this is what could happen to your track. Now look at the meter. I'm going to do it again. Now watch. It doesn't get any louder. It just becomes distorted. So that is what will happen if you do not gain stage. When someone is mastering your track, the loudest element is going to hit the limiter if they use break wall limiting, of course. But then the other elements will hit the limiter too. And if they are too loud, they will all distort in a similar fashion. Potentially, right? Like, not always. Sometimes you're just flatten it. But if you flatten the track too much, then it's going to lose all the punch and the power that it has, and it's going to sound corny. It's going to have no impact, and the drop is not going to be hard at all. So these are the reasons that you want to gain stage, right? So how to gain stage in FL Studio? The easiest way is just to turn down the volume control on the generators on the channel rack. You can easily use the gain knob to automate gain or just turn it down. It doesn't get any simpler than that. All right, so I'll show you what I do. Usually, and like most of the time, that's what I mean by usually, I just load some kick. And then I'm like, I like this kick. So I start playing that kick. I'm like, oh, it's going to, now pretend there's no limiter here because it's not going to go louder than that, but it will go to negative two. Now, depending on what type of track I'm writing, normally I'm going to make it so that the kick does not go above negative six. And negative nine is probably the lowest I'll go with like a kick drum because you don't want everything to be too quiet so that you can't hear it, right? Like that's the opposite problem. It's not to overdo it. It's just not to overdo it with too much volume. So you don't want to go the opposite way and overdo it with too little volume. So I would go here and just turn it down. You know, same if I was to use this. I would go here. And I would just turn it down to the point where the loudest is where I want it to be, like this. See, it's about negative nine decibels. And then I will surround everything else around that sound, right? So that way. I don't have to think specifically about how loud everything else should be. Everything else should just be quieter than the kick. And when I finalize the track, or as I'm mixing it, I change the volumes of other things based on what I want to stand out the most and when. So if I mix the vocal into it later, then I might decide that I have this synthesizer or that synthesizer or a trumpet or whatever, and I might turn that down to make space for the vocal and different things like that. You know, it depends on the mix. So that's pretty much it about gain staging. And I hope that it was able to help you out, you know, and please like, comment, subscribe, share, leave feedback, how you feel about this video. If it is helpful, what else I should cover. And as usual, and as always, have an awesome day. Peace.